All right, today I'm going to be showing you how to clean a 3D printer. Okay, so I have this 3D printer. I also have three other 3D printers at work. So cleaning this 3D printer and cleaning the ones at work are all the same thing. So this video is intended for the ones that uh, need help learning how to clean a 3D printer at work also. Okay, so the first thing is, let's say I haven't used a 3D printer in several weeks. Well, the resin in it needs to be shaken up, and in order to shake up resin, you have to put it back in the container. Now's a good time to clean the 3D printer because you have to do it anyway. You have to empty out the resin cartridge anyway. Okay, so you're going to need some tools. One, you're going to need a micro fine cloth. Okay, you can get these at like Walmart, a big pack of them for very inexpensive. Okay, micro fine cloth. Uh, you're going to need paper towel. Okay, you're going to need, I use denatured alcohol. And lastly, you're going to need an area, you know what I mean? Like you're going to need a clean area to work in. So what I generally do is just scrub down the area first before I even start. So to do that, like, you can see there's like spare resin on the table. Um, it is quite a messy operation as far as this is concerned if you get busy and you're 3D printing. So what I do is just... First off, this surface right here is chemical proof. So if you do do 3D printing, make sure that you are printing on a chemical proof surface, I would, because the resin gets everywhere. And the easiest way to clean it off is to have it on a chemical proof surface. So I can use denatured alcohol, I can use acetone, I can use whatever I want on this surface right here, and it will not affect it. You can get several laminate countertop options. I just got the kind that use, uh, usually scientists use for making labs. So yeah, just hose down your area first before you even start. Ew. Okay, another tool you're going to use, or need, tool, uh, and you don't have to do it this way, but this is a funnel, okay, and I got another funnel inside this funnel. This is a double wall funnel, so you get the funnel, this is a quick fill funnel, and then I got this funnel, okay, and what that allows me to do is have a double funnel, and I can not worry about the resin splashing anywhere or going out. It also allows me to hold one of these. You can pick these up in your painting aisle at any painting place. Okay, they come in different um, resolutions, I guess I, uh, I would call it. I'm not a painter, but they do come in different resolutions as far as the screen. You just need one to adequately thin. Uh, they're not labeled, so I don't know what this is. It came with the Elgu, but yeah, these are essential. And you can pick these up at your local painting place. Just don't get one that's too fine. I have some of those at work that uh, somebody gave to me, and they are just too fine, and the liquid doesn't go through. So what you do is you make sure that it looks like that. Boom. Okay. And then you find, keep your empty ones of these. They do come in handy. You don't need a whole lot of them. I keep three on hand. And you can see this fits perfectly right in there, just like that. The only downside I would say is I need to trim these a little bit in order so they don't rock back and forth. But that's to be done in the future. So there, I got that. That's off to the side, ready to go. The other thing I do is I take some clean paper towel and I put it down on the counter. 
just like that. Uh, the lighting in this room is all LED based. If you're doing this in fluorescent lighting, I would try to stay away from that. Try to keep an LED based uh, lab. Uh, that way it doesn't dry out. This UV will, um, the UV resin will harden a little bit if it gets really thin. So what we have to do is try to avoid that. We empty it in there and then we wipe out the tray itself. Uh, and we got to do that rather quickly because it'll dry. Okay, it only does it if it's real thin though. I could leave this tray out for a little bit and it will not harden. Um, and a little bit meaning maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> but anything outside of 30 minutes, it will start to crystallize at the top. All right, so let's take the top off. You can see the resin. Uh, you see how it's like it's kind of like a greenish slash. It's not gray. Okay, it's very translucent looking. That's a great indicator that you need to mix your resin up. This right here. Um, first off, I'll make sure it's clean. Okay. I make sure there's no parts that have just got 3D printed. If there was a part that needed to do, uh, that got 3D printed, I would remove the plate before I remove this, okay? But this is clean. I don't have to worry about that. So you loosen these two screws. Boom, boom. You lift it straight off and right onto the paper towel and just set there. Okay, so now uh, make sure your hands are clean before you even get started with the microfine cloth. I would just kind of look to see if there's any dust on here. There isn't, but I just kind of do a little brush over. So don't keep reusing the same microcloth. They are inexpensive and they are worth just throwing away. You can use that later on the bottom of this if needed. But for right now, I'm just going to go like this to keep dust off. Okay, now that I got that far, uh, now I'm gonna put on some gloves uh, and just that way if I get any on this, it doesn't irritate my skin. All right, so I ran out of gloves except for one, so I got one <laughs> white hand, one blue hand. Uh, what I would do is get you some seven mil gloves. They are so much better. This is a seven mil glove. I don't know what this is. It came with the 3D printer. It must be like 0.5 millimeter or something like that, mil. It's really thin, so get yourself some seven mil gloves. You can get them at Harbor Freight, really cheap. All right, let's see if I can zoom out to get everything in scene here. I do not have a cameraman. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is first, I'm going to pour this into here just by going like this. But I'm going to try to do it very stealthily and very quickly. If you do it right, it shouldn't drip to the bottom. If you do it very quickly. Okay, so there we go. Next, I will just kind of go like this to dab the corner. and then go back right onto the paper towel. Sweet. Now you'll notice that most of the polymer compound is at the bottom of here, so this, this mix right here isn't really 
too good. I'm not going to be using that. Uh, these are the good stuff. This is like the stuff that got sat around. You could try using it. I probably will anyway, just for fun. But I definitely have to mix it. All right, now time's ticking. This is thin. It's got to be dealt with. You can already see it crystallize a little bit. Here's what I do. I first add that. That will stop it from doing its chain reaction. And then I just sop it up. And I never let it get dry. Okay, while that one's there, I'm gonna get another piece. I'll throw the um, stuff in a tub. So there's a tub below me. The tub is one of those translucent tubs. I think it's uh, just one of those things that you get to sho shove different types of organization. You know, the, you get them at a hardware store. I forget what they call it. Sterilite. Doesn't have to be a certain plastic or anything like that. But it does have to be a, one of the clear tubs helps, I think. So what I'll do is I'll let these sit out in the sun before I dispose of them. It'll burn off the alcohol and then crystallize the resin and then it becomes a solid waste and then therefore it becomes something that you can dispose of in the garbage as solid waste. I don't let this get too dry as far as a paper towel is concerned. Once in a while, I'll, I'll just get a wet one. Do it one more wet once over. If it's too dry, it will scratch the film, and that's not good. This one's perfectly dry, so what I'm doing is just kind of blotting. Okay. Easy. Okay, now you can hold this up to the light and kind of see if there's anything on the bottom. Uh, there isn't that I could see, and what I do is kind of tilt tilt it like this so I can see if there's anything on the bottom. Uh, looks like I got it really good. I transferred it fast enough over. Okay. Just to make sure though, I don't know, looking at this, really expecting the bottom. See if there's any resin. That's what the main thing that you have to look out for is that at the bottom of this, you do not want the resin on this side. So inspect it, inspect it, inspect it. And if you're unsure, use your micro cloth to just do a once over on it, okay? But just definitely get rid of your micro cloth. That way you don't use it again. So if you're unsure, do that. Okay, it's ready to go back into it. What I do now is I just go like that so I don't set it down. Take the lid off. Make sure Max is in the back. See, this is Max. Tighten it all back down. And I'll put the lid on it so that if it's got some 
thin parts, it will not catalyze. All right, sweet. So now I have some time, I can uh, shake up my resin. Usually I hose down the area again, just a little bit. You are going to be going through some paper towel. Vivid is an awesome brand, by the way. It doesn't leave lint. Okay, so as I said, we could try to recoup that resin. Here's what you do. Because there's resin already in this. It wasn't just that resin. Just gonna shake it up real good. I mean real good, I mean really good. <laughs> I've been like thinking that I should get some marbles. Last ones, put them in the bottom of these. Just drop a couple in every one. Okay, so just kind of I'll look in there and see what color it is. And it is gray. It's really a, a opaque gray, and that's what I want. So I might have been okay. All right, sweet. Unless you're storing it for a very long time, again, I would do probably a once over on it if you're gonna store it for a long time. Just clean that tray one more time. But for me, I just needed to shake it up and put it back in so I can reprint. All right, so now I'm back. I'm ready for pressing out some stuff. Boom. I'm going to turn my power back on and I should be ready to go. So that's how you clean a 3D printer. Again, any of the paper towel, put it in a tub, put it in the sunlight for about 24 hours. Then you can dispose it as a solid waste. Um, all the alcohol will have burned off by then and all the resin would have crystallized to a powder form and that's okay. Uh, anything else, I generally, you know, like the funnel over there, I can use that several times. If I wanna throw out the filter, I'll do the same thing with the paper towel. I'll put this in with the paper towel and let that crystallize. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed how to clean a 3D printer. That's the Elgo series, done it many, many, many times. Always works great, so you have a good one.